guys, welcome back to Kumasau Reviews. We're taking a look at Iron Factory's IFEX 47 Void Tyrant. So this is their Galvatron. Pretty clear IDW variant of him. I'm not very familiar with Galvatron in the IDW comics. I believe that he's a separate entity from Megatron, so there wasn't the whole Megatron um, gets converted into Galvatron or anything like that. They're two separate characters. And again, that's what I think. Haven't Googled it. Uh, it's been a while since I've really delved into a lot of the Transformers lore comic-wise in general. But taking a look at the figure itself, right off the bat. All right, you know how we do. So to the tip of the crown, that head sculpt, four and a quarter while I knock everything down. If we look at that back piece there, we're looking at four, th four and three quarters. So four and three quarters total, four and uh, a quarter to the top of the head. Now looking at the accessories, of course, his cannon, which he turns into, also mounts on his forearm, a variety of hands, a more G1 styled head, and this is an alternate shoulder pad. So if you wanna mount the cannon on the back of his shoulder, you can. And he comes with a big giant axe. I don't know if that's an IDW thing or what, but it's pretty freaking cool. So this is a Legends class toy, meaning it's four inch scale. Scale is relative. That means pretty much you take a star character, right? So like a Goku, Optimus Prime, something like that. They're kind of the centerpiece size, and then everything kind of revolves around them. So four inch scale, meaning the average would be four inches or so, or main character size and then this would be a combiner here this is their ruination combiner completely original idea from iron factory this is their idw magnus the big ultra commander i think it's called the final battle version this is tyrant megatron i don't remember the name for the cliff jumper or their red alert so just looking at how he looks next to some of these other figures and again he's four and a quarter Megatron is a little bit, sh no, it's between four and four and a quarter, like four and an eighth. Cliff jumper here is just under three inches, three and a half. Big old DJD combiner, not Ruination, the Sept Septicon Justice Division. Their combiner, Ruination is the Carl Robot's version of Bruticus, but he's about nine inches to the head. Again, knocking everything down. And Magnus about six and a quarter. Or City Commander. So, pretty cool. And just so you can see how he scales next to some other Iron Factory Legends class figures. Okay, now we get to dig into the figure itself. See if we can zoom in a little bit closer there. Great detail into it too. Iron Factory has just really perfected what they do. Now, say the joints on this one are just flawless. No looseness, not overly tight. They've come a long way. And it's really cool because they're still pumping out figures like crazy. So I'll start head to toe. Head, on a ball joint you see, it even has side to side rock. I wish it had more up and down movement. The goatee here uh, takes away from that. And he has so much ab crunch that some more downward movement would be great. Shoulder pads do have some movement in there. Parallel. Roundabout. He does have bicep swivel, but you've got those treads on there too. Double jointed elbows. The wrists are on ball joints, so there's minimal rocking always. And then swivel, of course. The waist, 360. And the ab crunch is really good. Make sure you're standing flat-footed. Straight up. So ab crunch, front back. No back bend. Now these move out of the way. So does this. All right. Hips sideways. Forward swing. Back swing, that's without moving it. Move it up, get a little bit more. Knee bend, 90 degrees, single knee. Not a lot of ankle rock. Make sure that the feet, the heels of this can press 
up and down for the transformation, but forward and backwards, not a lot, but still lots of room for movement there. So if you want to, just for the sake of posing them here, use some of that ab crunch, get his, okay, so you got that. And that's where a little bit more ankle tilt, just the slightest bit more would be great. Really plant those feet. Get those shoulder pads up. Okay, so there's that. And then, cannon, just pegs in. Boom. Now this big axe, you have the option. He can dual weld it, or he could hold it either top side or bottom side. This middle piece connects it. And for the sake of it, let's just do the partial axe. All right. Boom. Ball joint pops off really easy. Boom. Boom. Again, more ankle tilt would be glorious. I'm not gonna knock it too crazy much because it's not not horrible. And these treads, they're on ball joints, so there is movement to them, but it can get hard to find a spot between those and the shoulder pads. Yeah. But again, just being able to plant his feet a little bit better there would be very nice. Okay. Um, give it some tilt there. Pretty cool, right? So let's take a look at that alternate head. Carefully pop this one off the ball joint. Okay. Pop the other one on. No screws or anything like that needed. It does have a screw in the back of the head in case it's too tight. But there you go. I don't personally like it as much. But, you know, it's one of those to each their own kind of things. Get a comparison there. All right, now getting this guy transformed, I've changed out his fist. It doesn't really matter. It just looks better to the closed fist. Um... Change out his head to the regular one. Again, doesn't matter. Remove the cannon from his arm. That you'll need to do. So the first thing to do is go ahead, get to the back side here. And this pulls out, okay? So that pulls out. And what you're going to do is just flip that up. Nothing crazy. So what you do from there is just from there, that hinge there. Do it up right there, okay? And make sure that it's pegged in. Got that. All right, so turn them back around. Now, turn it. Turn the waist around, 180. Then from the, from here, still on the side. Boom, boom, and I have done this before, so. Don't think I'm too crazy new. We're going back to the back side. There are two flaps on the feet here that flip out. I'm flipping these all the way out and back. So basically these flaps should cover the sides of the uh, shins there. Okay. The backs of the feet, the heels, flip in. They don't go flush, so it's going to look like an open mouth there. Think Pac-Man. From there... Make sure to flip these up, two side skirts, and then the legs go down and in. All right, and you gotta make sure that this is done so that, jeeps. So 
so that this peg stays that way because this is how you peg the two legs together once you got them so boom boom then from there you can peg them together like so okay all right boom 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 okay so we got that the head what you're gonna do take this whole thing i don't know why they don't just have you do it in the first place but flip that panel down and that goes up it doesn't tab into anything so don't worry about that this flips over there are two female portions right here that will peg in to two tabs on those two flaps that you flipped out over the heels so just make sure that that happens all right so boom boom And the nice thing about this is even if you have some trouble with it, it kind of feels kind of fidgety, there's so many parts that uh, tab into each other that in the end, it will feel a lot more secure than maybe it does like at this point for it. Okay. So right now, we're taking these arms, we're putting them up like so, boom, boom. Okay. Yep. That's what you should have. And then there are two panels. There's a split right here and right here. And both of these are gonna flip, I believe downwards. Downwards. Downwards, actually, it's the other way. So, flip them that way, ah. All right, and then these arms come around. And there are two tabs, right here, right here. And there are tabs on the insides of the forearms. So basically, Tab those to the insides of the forearms. Boom. Boom. Okay. Get that uh, hand back on. Okay. And then these shoulder plates, you just flip them down as far as possible. And then you can just use the ball joints on them to make sure that those touch the ground. Okay. This you don't have to worry about too much. All right, so we're gonna zoom in here. So we'll show you what we're about to aim at. So, line it up some. It's these two female portions as well as this uh, female tab. All right, so, turn it up a little bit so you can see the cannon. Cannon, boom. Flip that tab up. Flip this down. And this is gonna peg into that bottom piece right here. And then these two into those tabs. So, oh yeah, you gotta flip that up too. But, boom, peg that in as well. That in. And we are set. That's his candle mode. You can also make it adjust those treads a little bit more. So that's downwards. Make sure that these are on and straight. Boom. And make sure that there's a good bend to the elbows because that'll let you adjust it a bit at the treads, okay? So there's that. Okay. We have now I'm gonna go ahead and keep it in its cannon mode here, or keep it on the turnstile, to show you the cannon mode. And I mean, it's decent. Definitely Cybertronian, to say the least, but, I mean, it's a cannon. And it looks like a cannon. I like it well enough. But anyway, this has been Iron Factory's IFEX 47 Void Tyrant. Iron Factory was kind enough to send me this for review, but you can order yours at TF Source. The link will be in the description. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. Like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.